As you know, chemistry is the study of the transformations or the changes of matter. And because we're so focused on observing and understanding the changes that matter undergoes, we actually have different types of changes that we recognize and study. So one of the things we're gonna do in this video is classify and, and define the two different types of changes that we observe in chemistry, physical and chemical changes. Also at the same time, another big part of chemistry involves observing measuring and describing the properties of matter. And so uh, the other part of this video is to go over the different types of properties that we will be observing, physical and chemical, and extensive and intensive properties. And so in this video, we're going to define all six of these terms and then give some examples of each. So let's start with physical change. A physical change is a change in an object's state. State refers to if it is a solid or a liquid or a gas, which I'm going to abbreviate with these lowercase letters in parentheses. So it's a change in state, changing from a solid to a liquid or a solid to a gas or a gas to a liquid or whatever. These are changes that take place without changing the object's identity. So there's no change to the identity of the matter. For example, water as a solid can be changed into water as a liquid or water as a gas, but its identity, water, is not being changed. The opposite of that, or the contrast to that, would be a chemical change. In chemical changes, we are looking at a change in identity so here we have an object just being completely transformed into something else. Chemical changes sometimes also involve a change in state. So it may include that, it may not, but the key part here is that there is a change in identity. So let's give a couple of examples for physical change. That could be something like melting ice or boiling water turning it into steam, some changes in identity, um, turning something into something else. This could be um, iron turning into rust. Iron and rust are two very different substances, so that's a total change in identity. This could also be something like a piece of paper being lit on fire and burned and turned into ashes. So again, those are two totally different things, complete changes in identity. Now, we also have a physical properties and chemical properties. And the definition of physical and chemical properties is really based off of our definitions for physical and chemical changes. Properties are things that we observe and document about a substance like how much does it weigh, what temperature is it, what color is it, what does it smell like, what is its pH. Physical properties are properties that we can measure without changing the object's identity. And they don't have to be involving a change of state. So a physical property does not require a change in state in order to be measured. It just requires that there is no change to the object's identity. Whereas a chemical property is a property that can only be measured while we are changing its identity. So there are a lot of examples of physical properties. They're much more common. Things that we can measure without changing the object's identity. Let's think about a piece of iron. What types of properties can we measure of that piece of iron without turning it into something else? Well, we could weigh it and we could determine its mass. We could measure it. We could determine its volume. We could um, smell it, see if it has any sort of smell. Let's maybe think about a, a liquid. Let's think about a glass of water. Um, we could measure the water's pH. We could determine if it conducts electricity. 
there's a lot of substances that we can measure without changing the identity of that particular substance. Chemical properties are not as common. There aren't as many of them as there are physical properties. But one example would be, let's say, the color of an object's flame. So that would be like, what color is the flame when we, uh, of paper when we light paper on fire? And the only way that we can determine that is by lighting paper on fire, which will result in it turning into ashes. Or another one would be an object's reactivity, like how violent does it react or how quickly does it react? And the only way that we would be able to observe that would be to force that object to undergo some sort of chemical reaction that would result in a change in the object's identity. Now, last but not least, let's talk about extensive and intensive properties. Extensive and intensive is a totally separate classification of property. So a property is either physical or chemical, and it is either extensive or intensive. It's not one of the four. It's going to be either physical or chemical, and then also extensive or intensive. Extensive and intensive has to do with the sample size of an object. An ex extensive property is a property that depends on your sample size, depends on how much you have. And an intensive property is one that is independent of the sample size, doesn't matter how much you have. So examples of extensive properties would be like the mass of an object. Obviously, the more you have, the greater its mass will be, or the volume of an object. The more you have, the greater its mass would be. An intensive property doesn't depend on the sample size, so that would be something like color. It doesn't matter how much you have, it's all gonna be the same color, or the temperature at which an object melts or boils. Uh, it's pH, doesn't matter how much you have, the pH will be the same an object's smell. Now, maybe the more you have, the stronger the smell will be. But if we're talking about does it have a smell, yes or no, what does it smell like, pineapples or goats, um, that won't change based on sample size.